happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome in yet again another weekend of Rocket League. CCA Sunday, the top eight, Saints Varsity, pretty much steamrolling the bracket yesterday, not dropping a single game, I believe, the entire day. But we have Jobin and Banners here to take you through the tour with CCA Sunday, the Saints, trying to rack up those CRL last chance points. But they're going to have a rematch game on their hands from last week. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a chance of there even being more down the road as this day goes on. But of course, George Mason University, this was the squad that took us out last week, I believe, if I do recall correctly. And it was in a rather convincing fashion. And it's going to be interesting going into new week. Of course, a whole new week to practice and whatnot. And then even on Friday, we did see the Saints had some fantastic competition versus Northwood yep. there. Like top level North American talent. And they did end up going down 3-0. But all those games were like two goal games. Yep. So I'm curious if we can pull that kind of like similar performance without the nerves. If you're playing on that kind of level, yep. could it take George Mason? I think it'll be a little bit closer than yeah. the 3-0 at the very least. Yeah, and I think Spooch <laughs> is actually going to be back in the lineup. That is true as well. We yeah. saw him play against Northwood. I believe he finished with the highest score in all three games for the Saints, so he clearly has not missed a step, even though he's been in that coaching role. He's obviously been putting that work in with the guys with Quint, and I believe it's going to be Christian as well to round out that lineup, but Spooch's going to be back in the lineup once again, trying to be that defensive anchor, maybe that calming presence at the Saints. He's been at Worlds, he's been on the big stages, so maybe he can bring some of that energy, <laughs> reel the Saints, and be like, okay guys, we know we got taken out last week, but I'm here now, let's take care of business, let's get these CRL points and I believe if they win more than likely they're going to meet up with Akron Gold I assume In Akron theory. Gold will probably win their first round matchup and that'll be another revenge game of sorts Akron taking out the Saints in that double bracket reset a couple weeks ago snatching that first place away so they have a lot on the line here this week yeah a lot of the matches around the the tournament right now are just interesting as well. A lot of familiar faces, to say the least. Down in the lower bracket, of course, Indiana Hoosiers and Northeastern. Those are the two teams that Saints have taken out. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure if for whatever reason we have that opportunity to play one of them again, they are going to be absolutely hungry. But, of course, on the winner's side as well, um, you're mentioning Akron. They're going up against Michigan Tech. We did get to play them, the Huskies, during the first CCA yep. Open. We were able to take it quite ha handily, but... Michigan Tech's always been one of those schools that are like they could on their day be a CRL talent, maybe like mid to yeah. like low uh, rating in CRL, which is still fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But uh, Akron not being in CRL is just absolute outrage. So, yeah. you know, they're playing angry. Yeah, Akron has been the one team consistently, and that's, I believe, I think we saw those at the top four of the top eight at the end of all these CCA Opens. There is going to be one more next week as well, so yeah. we're counting down the CCA. We're getting slowly, we're getting closer and closer <laughs> to that end mark. The Saints, they have made top eight, I believe, every single time so far. They took second place. I believe they finished fifth last week now, yeah. trying to get into that first, second chance. They should have a good amount of points. If they're able to finish the top three or top four today, they're going to be sitting in a very, very nice spot because I don't think the same four teams have been at the top four the last couple weeks. I know Akron has been like first and second, and all the other other teams have kind of been jumping in and out of that top five. So the Saints, if they can have another good week or two, they're definitely going to be primed to get in that CRL last chance. They've been doing such a good job playing around, but say they still have a little more work to do to make sure they don't have to worry about that later. And then the big outrage, or not the outrage, but the uh, surprise factor, I guess, so to speak, in the last one was actually from one of the teams in our other lower bracket matchup as well, uh, GVSU. Yes. We've played them. We know they've always been solid. But they surprisingly, like, they took us out rather convincing. It was on the winner's bracket yep. of the last uh, CCA Open. And then, like, okay, it's wrapped up, and I go look later. It's like, oh, GVSU won CCA. Yeah. It's like, wait a, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, first off, I don't feel anywhere near as bad losing to them <laughs> yeah. now. Two, where did they come from? <laughs> and they are going up against another team that we did play earlier in CCA Open 2, which, of course, is uh, Florida's... Florida State, Florida, Florida Atlantic. That was, That's yeah. what it was, Florida Atlantic University. So lots of teams that we've had plenty of experience against. And regardless of the matchup that we end up getting here today throughout this bracket, it's going to be absolutely insane. So we're all in for a treat. Yeah, that's why CCA is like, it's really, really weird, but also really fun in a way because teams like a team like earlier going in Valley Field, finishing fourth at Worlds have kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit. A lot of these teams that we thought for mm -hmm. sure would be guaranteed top eights every single week have kind of maybe fallen off or had some roster changes. Things maybe haven't gone their way. We've seen so many new teams, as you said, GVSU Blue coming pretty much out of nowhere, steamrolling all of CCA last week i didn't i don't not sure if they finished top eight the week before i don't remember seeing their name they like, didn't they weren't in there at all exactly yeah so they go from not being in there to basically i think they beat us i think they beat akron down the line they beat a ton of like really top tier teams so there's a lot of these teams still coming out of the woodworks and they're still say having this cca open and the next one still to play there was a lot of time for a lot of these teams that maybe came out of nowhere to still make some noise and get those points and sneak in and that can always be a dangerous thing and of course just the value of being able to get all these points and being in that top section to like 
sneak your way as a wild card into that CRL uh, playoffs, of course. Like a lot of these teams, they barely missed it. Very, very close, but just could not quite get the job done. Yep. If you're able to get that, that would be absolutely amazing. However, we're going to get the pitch set up real quick before we hop into our first matchup versus George Mason University. Don't go anywhere.
CCA Sunday top eight now underway onto the pitch. St. Clair College taking on the George Mason Patriots who they fell to last week in 3-0 fashion to get knocked out of that CCA Open. Who's out on that top eight squad eventually that second day. But they are back. They are here for revenge. As we mentioned, Spoots is going to be back in the lineup just like he was in that Northwood game on Friday. So the Saints maybe a little bit of a new look at life here. They're going to try to topple GMU now. Yeah, the side of George Mason also a little bit of a different lineup compared to what we saw in the last uh, CCA Open. Instead of Raziev being that third player, it's actually JK. As you see him already making a little bit of an impact there on the defensive side of things here for George Mason. Yeah, going to send that ball back to that Saints end. JK going to put that one toward the Nets boots, though. Going to knock that one back over that midline. Christian now going to wait to play that one out. Saints trying to gather possession over that middle area. A little double commit, but they will make the save nonetheless. Quint going to be the first man there. Now Christian going to follow. Decent little crack toward that backboard. Trying to find that second touch, but is going to get kicked away by Titanium. Going to shut down that second opportunity. Now JK going to take to the sky, speeding it over to Devin. Trying to find that second touch off the backboard. Not going to quite find home there, Quint. Trying to drive this one out of that same zone and try to get a bit of a reset here. Yeah, very neutral start to this matchup to say the least. Like no major opportunity on target for either of the, these teams right now. We do see the ball going towards him there. Spoods is going to pick up for a second. The shot on target, however, it's on the line. Christian is going to get a piece of it and carry it away. Good save on the side of Christian for the Saints, but still the pressure is all in the favor of George Mason right now. Yeah, we know how strong George Mason is as a team. They've been having an excellent run, multiple CCA runs back to back to back. They've been placing in that top eight consistently. They have shown they are a team not to be trifled with the Saints, trying to make sure they get out to this early lead, try to get ahead of the scorecards here, then try to make GMU play off that back foot, try to make them play into your game, GMU trying to still threaten in this offensive zone. They've had a couple good chances so far. There's going to be yet another one. Quint reading that one beautifully. JK trying to play this one back to that corner over the middle. Going to set that one up for Titanium. Going to try to take this one in. Weave through the defenders. Not going to be able to do so, though. The Saints going to look to clear this one out and try to get some counterattack going. Yeah, this could be opportunity. Christian flips it over. JK with the save. The rebound there from Spoods is going to be blocked as well. But you can see from GMU's side already that they're already willing to maybe take a couple or at least threaten the aggressive like demolition kind of play. We saw Quint make that one initial save but was instantly like pressured on by I believe it was JK. But now back into the corner here of the Saints zone. I mean, Quint trying to pick it up, gets past Titanium, looking for some additional assistance here. Spoods is there for it. Ground into the crease. JK going to push it aside, and Devin's going to clear, and that's actually right on target. Can they get there? No, Devin is actually going to find the back of the net from his own side. Yeah, nobody from the Saints getting back for those rotations in time. Spoods deep in that corner. Christian tried to get aggressive and play up on that one. Quint was not back in time for that one. Devin going to just pitch that one in from half court. GMU going to open up the scoring in this game one. Going to be up to a 1-0 lead. Took us two and a half minutes to find the goal, but usually what we expect to see with two very, very solid teams. You see that feeling out process. GMU, though, had a couple nice chances and finally converting there. Yeah, absolutely. The close-knit quarters of these two uh, these two teams just makes for some very, very exciting games. And as we say time and time again here for a Racket League, one goal is next to nothing yeah. in terms of a lead. Good little steal there from Christian. <laughs> no, the Rob, J.K. of Boost, and he's completely gassed as of this point, which allows Quint to slide on through. Big bounce right towards Christian. Could not quite find the shot on it. Spoots is going to have to extend to get this, and that wasn't necessarily the greatest of bounces as Titanium with the block setting up J.K. Ooh, Quint, great job to get a read on that one. Not going to have enough juice to score that one, though the Saints playing with fire in that end just a little bit. Passing that ball back toward the middle. Always a very, very dangerous play, Quinn. Trying to get something going over that backboard. Spoods trying to set up Christian there. Christian off the backboard. A little bit of a double commit there. Okay. Nonetheless, though, it's going to go through. Two is better than one. The Saints are going to finally get on the board here. 127 left to play. It looked a little bit dangerous there with that double commit, but luckily Christian and Spoods going to link up for that pinch. Spoods going to be the goal getter there. And now the Saints going to lock things up at once. Yeah, that was a close one. George Mason did get the touch on the defense, but could not completely redirect it away. So we're all tied up once again. Minute 30 or so left on the clock. And Titanium looking to make an early push. Not quite going to get there just yet, though. Right back into the GMU zone for the time being. Devin's going to be kind of stuck up in the skies trying to get this thing cleared out. Sure enough that it's going to be, in fact, the case. But extremely close first game here in the series. Yeah, very, very good back and forth. We've seen demos, steals, takeovers, both teams right now just trying to find that edge. They've done a great job of kind of reading into each other now this last couple minutes. It'll be a good shot on net there from the Saints. Boots trying to get that half-court goal of his own. Devin going to knock that one back to that opposite corner, letting JK maybe go make a play. He's going to let Christian take that one off, though. Christian go a little bit errant there in the sky, not going to get that follow. Quint, though, 
follow-up from half court. Christian gonna find a demo. Saint maybe got some space here. Quint doing a great oh. job to get that one into the middle, but he was getting defended extremely well in front of that crease. Just not able to bury that one or set that pass up over the middle. But if you're the Saint, you've got to be feeling good about getting this pressure, finding a couple opportunities. Christian gonna take those demos when they show up as well. Spoots now gonna try to play for a 2v1 Christian. Good little shot there toward the net. Gonna go off that backboard. Time is ticking away over time potentially on the horizon here, but St. Clair, they're gonna try to find this oh. goal. It's gonna be a beautiful save by Titanium. Only 10 seconds to play in regulation. That's extremely close. The Saints might have one more opportunity here. And Spooch is there, and he is gonna find it. It's actually Christian going to seal the deal in the crease. Was just sitting there waiting for it. A beautiful pass from Spooch to secure this one. Christian knocks it down. And Spoots, oh, it's, it was actually Spoots. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't necessarily wrong, but the little spoiler at the very end of the car. Yeah. Going to get the final touch on that. Yeah, I think Spoots took the goal from Christian earlier. Christian had to get that one back, so both <laughs> boys going to end up with a goal nonetheless now. But three seconds to play GMU. They still have a chance. Oh, the double touch off the oh backboard. My. <laughs> Just not going to land on Titanium, bringing Woo. it as close as you could without putting that ball in the back of the net. The Saints going to win that game with, I believe, six seconds left on that last goal, something in that ballpark. Phenomenal game. They did such a good job that second half. You could see the passing plays really started to get going. We saw tons of good defensive plays. The one goal they gave up, just a missed rotation. But you're going to take that game one. Already won more than you won last week against GMU. No, absolutely. And that's exactly where you need to start because, of course, this was a nerve-wracking matchup, to yep. say the least there. To be able to seal the deal in that like last-second kind of Style just absolutely insane. Beautifully done there from the entire Saints squad to make that one happen. Now we, need, we have the momentum on our side. We need to keep this one up. And it looks like Spoods is going to do just that as we hop into game two. And he's looking for the individual effort. Yeah, Spoods trying to throw throwback Spoods move there. The Saints, it is a best of five though. So winning that first game is going to be fantastic. But you still have a lot of work to do, especially against a squad as strong as GMU is. They're going to come back. They're going to try to punch the Saints right back, get that counter attack going. Saints are going to have to be ready to answer the bell here, Quint. Trying to wait on this defensive end here. Christian going to be the one to try to get the play. Going to be a great little move there from Devin to try to create that space, get that shot through, but just not going to find the marks. GMU going to immediately threaten the Saints early and often. Christian going to make the save this ball in a very, very dangerous spot right now. GMU still trying to threaten Spooch, doing all he can to try to get this ball to the other end. JK contesting him every step of the way on that drive. Yeah, still in the GMU zone for the time being, though. Devin here is going to clear it up, up, up to the pass. I believe that's Titanium. Sure enough into the corner they go, but they're not going to really be able to put the ball into a threatening position until maybe now. Quint is up there, going to knock it down, does have some assistance as well if need be, but this is an opportunity here for GMU. Titanium doesn't quite have the boost to get back up to where Spoots is, so the Saints are completely content right now, just kind of playing the long game, the slow, methodical game, compared to just sending it. Yeah, that was a really good pass. Oh, and he's going to end up passing it to himself. Christian, a beautiful job there. Going to end up getting the assist from Spoots. Christian, going to be the one to set that, that shot up. Spoods doing a great job to nice. find that touch. Get two defenders looking the wrong way. Christian, going to be home to bury that one. And exactly what you wanted to start off with the Saints. Find that early goal. Try to put that pressure on GMU. Make them really start to sweat as it gets later and later into these games. Having that series lead. You can really start to make GMU maybe play out of their character. Maybe make some, some mistakes that not necessarily would be uh, easy to come by otherwise. But you're going to take that one nothing lead. And you're going to hopefully run the ball. I mean, most other players in that situation Spoods was in would have just taken the shot themselves. But the fact that he was instead opted for the drop pass right to Christian, beautifully done, fantastic trust on this roster. And you can see, even though Spoods has been more so the coaching role, still just absolutely finding his mark already here with the Saints roster. Yeah, this guy was still one of the one of the better players on a top three in the world roster. So Spoods absolutely. definitely has the, has this chop. <coughs> he definitely has been. And like we said, he's been in these big moments before. C-State East Open number three got to be like child's play to him at this point. So he's been on that big stage. He's been on land. He knows when to perform. And so far, he has gotten involved every which way. Quint has done a great job holding in that defensive end while Christian and Spoods have gotten going with those goals. All members, though, doing a phenomenal job so far. Spoods actually going to end up with possession. He's wow. Gonna find the bump too. Oh, Spoods, don't do him like that, my brother. He is going to end up clearing out all that space. Look at that. Multiple touches. Going to send Devin swirling. Van Worlen Christian going to knock that one across the goal line. Beautiful job. Absolutely punted JK out of the way as well. So got past one, dealt with two defenders by himself. All that Christian had to do there was just swoop in and take the shot yep. and just set it up absolutely fantastically. And you love to see it. Yeah, beautiful oh job. My. Oh, and something you love to see a little more. Quint now going to get on the board for himself. First time of the series here. All three members now going to be on the scorecards. Look at Christian 
the ball movement from these Saints has been on point. They are getting GMU looking every which way except for where the ball is going. That's going to be a nice, easy goal for them. Now they're sitting pretty with this 3 nothing lead, but with two and a half minutes to play, as quickly as the Saints score two or three, we know GMU can easily answer back. So you want to make sure you maybe find that fourth or that fifth. At least take some clock off if you're going to let GMU end up getting one back. But a beautiful job nonetheless to start this game off. Yeah, that's exactly it. All these goals happen extremely quickly. We're only passing the halfway point right now. JK nearly Ooh. finding the double touch here off of Christian's car, but could not quite get past the post. Of course, our favorite fourth member of the team, Nasby yeah. Nassi. <laughs> Christian off to Quince. It looks like no Quince is going to think otherwise. going to wait for the second opportunity. Gets past the defenders, but ends up just dumping it into the corner for the time being. Spoods now coming around. No boost, oh. but we know he does <laughs> not care. He's going to push forward anyway. Quince lobbing it through the, the crease, but all this time being spent yep. in the George Mason zone is just more time that they don't have to worry about defending. Yeah, the Saints have done a great job playing that possession game, especially the last half of this game and the end of uh, game one there as well. They're just doing a great job keeping that ball in their hands on the bumper of their cars, stealing this one away from George Mason, bringing it into their end, killing off this clock as best as possible. Titanium is going to go up for that Sky Challenge Boots. Going to be first man there, hit that one off the back right tire. Going to be taken away in the sky by JK, though. Quint, once again, playing this back line soundly so far, just going to Take that one off that crossbar. JK, though, and to get a little crack at the net there. GMU going to threaten, but Christian going to find that second save as well. GMU trying everything they can right now to still find that first goal, but as long as the Saints defense can hold up a little bit longer, this time is now ticking away by the second. They should be in very good spot. Look at Christian. He knows. 3 nothing lead. Lots of time to play with. I don't need to try to aggress this one. I got to wait for my teammates to make sure we got those rotations and just play safe the next 50 seconds. Yeah, absolutely, because you know that the side of GMU are going to be maybe trying to force the issue a little bit at this point, because this is still within range, to say the least. 45 seconds could get the job done, but they're going to have to do some of these maybe double or triple commits even to really emphasize on the offense, but the more and more that this ball is just flying around in the neutral, the neutral zone or even in the same zone, it's just time is being killed off of this clock. 30 seconds left to go here. Shot off the crossbar, off the post, nearly getting the job done, but with it just being... Too little too late, it feels like here for George Mason. Yep. They would need an absolute miracle of like three immediate banger shots. Yeah, and now with that being said, that's going to be probably the end of GMU for game two. It looks like the Saints should be walking into this one with a 2-0 lead. We should be wrapping up game two in 3-0 fashion as well. Hopefully preserving that shutout. Don't want to jinx him and cost up the zero. Hey. Oh, Spoots, why not one more? Going to be, I believe, yeah, so he's going to get on the board there. Christian going to end up with two goals. Spoots with one and Quint with one. All three members going to get it done. Look at Christian letting Spoots take that one away. He's like, I got the second touch, man. Do not worry. And worry not are the Saints right now. 4 nothing lead in game two. They're going to close this one out, and they're going to put GMU on match point to send them down to losers. And St. Clair, hopefully, going to try to clean out this one in three games, ideally. Try to get that little bit of rest time before facing Akron, I believe it was Northeast. Yeah, we're on a pace here to give GMU a little bit of a taste of their own yeah. medicine, so to speak, because this is definitely looking rather dominant. Like, game one was rather close, but then going into game two, like, this was just a snowball yeah. to say the least there where GMU just could not really get anything started they had the two opportunities I hit the post so like there were opportunities there but even just taking a look at the sh shots from the side monitor here we did lose a players and probably not going to be completely accurate but let's say even this is this was like six shots yeah they were on par yeah with the scenes in terms of shots just were they the most quality of shots most quality of opportunities not necessarily. They're a little bit scrappy, but those can yeah. still work. But it's definitely not the GMU that we saw last week. Whether that has to do with Raziak not being in the lineup or not is uh, a question. But that yeah. being said, it's not that JK is playing bad either. Nobody's playing bad right no. now. Everyone, it's just yeah. Saints are finding the opportunities. Yeah, everyone's played clean. And honestly, Spoods, is, it's so good to see him come back and play so, so well the last two series. He played great against Northwood, stepping in immediately, getting that solo goal, setting up Christian on the goal line. And the passing plays have been so good for the Saints. They look so well coordinated. Everything looks like it's kind of clicking at the right time. They're sending that ball over the middle, keeping GMU buried in that end. And that's one of their keys to victory always, is keep the opponent on the back foot. When they absorb too many shots, Shots, that's when they find themselves down one two nothing early that's where we sometimes see those four or five nothing games sometimes the series they end up getting swept in but if they're able to get out on that front foot they do such a good job and so far 
Domination in game two. Hopefully they can continue that trend. If they do, they will be handing GMU an Uno reverse card in five minutes. Absolutely. I don't care how good your defense is. Your de your defense can save you games, but it does not win you games. Yeah. So even though GMU has been doing a solid job for the most part of keeping themselves alive, it's little opportunities like that. Okay, great. You made that save, but now can you turn this around into an offensive opportunity? Or is this just going to come right back at you as we see Christian Whoa. flying on through, looking for the juke, not quite going to find it. It's going to be stopped by JK. So nice done in that regard and now Devin this is what I'm talking about now they got pressure yeah they're kind of trying to find that double touch they did double commit over that backboard though so no one's going to be able to quite catch that rotation oh great little stop there from I believe JK though to keep possession now Devin take to the air trying to find that reset balls you going in almost oh. Spoon's gonna dig that one off the goal line keep this one knotted at zeros nice and early in this game the Saints don't want to let GMU get ahead don't want to let them get any momentum I don't believe GMU is yet to score in this series I do not want to jinx anything but the Saints are looking pretty mighty and tall right now they want to make sure they keep the foot on GMU, not let them breathe at all. Try to get this early lead. Make GMU really start to sweat knowing they're down to nothing. If you can get that goal lead as well, you can really start to make them take some chances. Take some chances which result in a lot of poor play, but there's still a lot of time to play and both teams looking for that first goal. I was just about to make the comment that it feels like this game's gotten much more aggressive in terms of car and car contact, but I feel like I've not seen much in terms of demos. And then Spoo's made me eat my yeah. words and then immediately demo somebody, but still just the constant threat of being knocked out of position is just nerve-wracking for both sides, but GMU especially, I feel like are respecting it maybe a little bit too much, and they're not putting themselves in the position to make those shots even happen in the first place. Yeah, it's almost like the playing not to lose sort of mentality where, yeah, you're kind of waiting back to see what the other person does first, but it can be very hard to just be reactionary the entire game. You want to be proactive, get out there and get stuff done. Christian going to save that one from sneaking under the crossbar. So the Saints locking down this back end so far. All three members getting a lot of saves these last couple games through defense. Maybe even a priority in the locker room for the boys the last little while, but they have definitely shown up and shown out defensively. They've been holding nice. on most teams to one to two goals a game these last few series they played. Quint trying to send this one over to that GMU zone. The Saints trying to get this offensive flow going that they found in those first two games. And about halfway through this one now, of course, no goals on the board so as of yet. Christian up along the left-hand side. Has a lot of boost, can make something happen. Nearly gets the shot off. JK gets a save, does get pushed aside, but thankfully the rebound was controlled immediately. Uh -oh. No, Nobody uh -oh. in net. They could just walk this all the way through. Spoots is going to get the Saints ahead here in game number three. What a demo by Quint. Spoots, a great play to get that one into the corner. Quint doing all the work for Spoots that he needs. Clear out that man in front of the net. Absolutely nobody home to answer the door for GMU and the Saints. They're going to find that first goal in a lovely fashion. Now half the game left to play. The Saints have got to be feeling good. A lot of Rocket League to play, but GMU, they have struggled on offense. They've had some really good chances. They've just been getting snuffed out every single time, but they're going to have to make something happen, and they're going to have to make it happen quick. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> that could have been disastrous, but... They are going to hang on to it, just giving everybody the slightest of heart attacks. Of course, the Saints being up 2-0 right now would be an absolute heartbreaker here for the GMU squad, but at least they were able to reconvene and uh, keep this thing going. We see, once again, JK this is going to go towards net, but nobody is there to interfere with the defenders, similar to the, to the kind of role that Spoods and Quint have been yeah. doing on, uh, on the Saints side. So. Saints have been able to get these calculated saves and find these breakouts and just keep the ball extremely safe. Yeah, they're just playing very, very smart. Clean on defense, clean on offense and that. That 2-0 for GMU would have felt like an 8-0 putting it in your own net. They would have yeah, been definitely hurt. hurting that one. They would have been kicking themselves something fierce. JK, great little pass over the middle. Can they find that second touch? It's going to be Quint or Spoods to dig that one out. Christian taking this one out, trying to make something happen on the offensive end. He's going to dodge Titanium. Oh, Christian going to line that one up and knock it down. His fourth shot of the game. Finally going to get on the board. A great solo play here. Going to skirt. Oh, little stop and go on the defender. Little hezzy. And he's going to put that one in the top of the net. Now a two-goal lead. Only a buck 26 to play off sweeping GMU to losers. Yeah, very rarely in Rocket League do I ever think of hitting the brakes. And that was just yeah. a beautiful <laughs> example of maybe sometimes you should. As we do Ooh. see a big play coming out there for the Saints to score that second goal. Granted now, Titanium JK, two solid shots on target. They're just not quite going to be able to bury it. First one saves, second one on just a bit high once again. Minute left on the clock here. But the JK and the rest of this George Mason squad maybe turn this one around. Otherwise, that is going to be to the lower bracket for you. That Quint is going to get demoed, but luckily Spoots and Christian both realizing, okay, we have a minute left to play. Defense has to be the number one priority. We found enough goals, we should think, for the rest of the time being here. We want to make sure we close out GMU nice and safe here. 
45 seconds ago. Titanium trying to get something going in this offensive end. So to that right side, trying to maybe find a pass. Not going to be a good reset there. Is going to send that over right to one of the Saints. And JK cheating up on that midline. Not yep. going to be back there. And Christian's going to find number two. Six shots on the day for Christian. Three goals for St. Clair. And in all likelihood, a 3 nothing series as well. I'm not sure we're going to see three goals from GMU in 35 seconds. I believe they've been shut out the entire series as well. So they're looking to maybe at least find one for something at this point. Yeah, definitely having a hard time there. And you can tell they were doing what they needed to do to try and get some, themselves on the board. However, that is always the risk. Yep. All three members are cross half. And it just let the Saints have a breakaway and just knock it in for free. So now 20 seconds left, similar to what you're saying, the likelihood of George Mason coming back from here is improbable. It's going to get something started, but even right there, Quint just slowing things down. Shot is going to be barely Whoa. on target, actually. Going to hit the post. But as time ticks down here, this is going to be a, a little bit of a revenge match yeah. here for the Saints, giving GMU a taste of their own medicine as they're going to take care of them in a 3-0 fashion. Yeah, a taste of their own medicine, and then some going to shut out GMU the entire series as well. Defense virtually flawless the entire time. All three members getting on the score sheet as well. Just a beautiful series, night and day from what we saw last week. They played a good series last week, but GMU, as the as the series went on, what we saw today kind of, GMU kind of snowballed those games. You could see the momentum was on their side. The Saints today, they just shut down everything GMU had on offense and defensively. They held up just enough to keep in those games. Absolutely, and it never really felt like there was an opportunity where GMU truly felt like they had a sort of solid possession or solid yeah. control. While they still had opportunities, they were definitely scrappy, like I was mentioning a little bit earlier, just kind of sending things forward, maybe the occasional, like even individual efforts we've seen very, very, very yeah. few of, and they just could not really keep it out of their zone, even though they were even on shots for the most yeah. part in majority of those games. Yeah, a lot of it was GMU getting a lot of these one-off shots. The Saints did a good job of cycling the ball back and forth. How many passes over the middle did we see? And then, as we said, you get that early lead, then GMU. They have to play overly aggressive. You find two easy goals in the back half of that game three, exactly what you're looking for. You close out the sweep. And I'm guessing the bracket isn't going to be updated on the other side quite, unless there was another very, very fast 3-0. Yeah, and like I mean, we, we give yeah. we give Akron credit. However, I also give Michigan Tech credit there. Yeah, past CRL squad, and as of right now, no, we do not quite know our opponent just yet. But that would be the winners' final. We're already putting ourselves yep. in a guaranteed top three position. Yep. Of course, Saints are not going to be content with that. We're happy already, but how far can we go today? Yeah, how far can we go? That will be the question to be answered, but we will throw it to a break. In between these games, it'll be the winner of Akron and Michigan Tech, the Saints, as we said. Top three finish secured. Going to look to take that number one spot when we come back later. Into the corner here of the Saints zone. Jimmy Quinn trying to pick it up. Gets past Titanium. Looking for some additional assistance here. Spoods is there for it. Ground into the crease. JK going to push it aside. And Devin's going to clear. And that's actually right on target. Can they get there? No, Devin is completely gassed as of this point, which allows Quinn to slide on through. Big bounce right towards Christian. Could not quite find a shot on it. Spoods is going to have to extend to get this. And that wasn't necessarily the greatest of bounces as Titanium with the block. Setting up JK. Ooh, Quinn, great job. They had a read on that one. Not going to have enough juice to score that one, though. The Saints playing with fire in that end just a little bit. Passing that ball back toward the middle. Always a very, very dangerous play. Quinn trying to get something going over that backboard. Spoods trying to set up Christian there. Christian off the backboard. A little bit of a double commit there. Okay. Nonetheless, though, it's going to go backboard. Time is ticking away. Overtime potentially on the horizon here. But St. Clair, they're going to try to find this oh. goal. It's going to be a beautiful save by Titanium. Only 10 seconds to play in regulation. That's extremely close. The Saints might have one more opportunity here. And Spoots is there. And he is going to find it. It's actually Christian. Go this is an opportunity here for GMU. Titanium doesn't quite have the boost to get back up to where Spoots is. So the Saints are completely content right now, just kind of playing the long game, the slow, methodical game, compared to just sending it. Yeah, that was a really good pass. Oh, and he's going to end up points. He's been on that big stage. He's been on land. He knows when to perform. And so far, he has gotten involved every which way. Quint has done a great job holding in that defensive end, while Christian and Spoots have gotten going with those goals. All members, though, doing it. Combo drop so far. Spoon's actually going to end up with possession. He's wow. going to find the bump to all. Well, so got past one, dealt with two defenders by himself. All that Christian had to do there was just swoop in and take the shot yep. and just set it up absolutely fantastically. And you love to see it. Yeah, beautiful. Oh shot. my. Oh, and something you love to see. <laughs> off this block. 30 seconds left to go here. Shot off the crossbar, off the post, and nearly getting the job done, but with it just being. Too little, too late, it feels like here for George Mason. Yeah. They would need an absolute miracle of like three immediate banger shots. Yeah, and now with that being said, that's going to be probably the end of GMU for game two. It looks like the Saints should be walking into this one with a 2 nothing lead. 
we should be wrapping up game two in three nothing fashion as well. Hopefully preserving that shadow. Don't want to jinx him and cost it the zero. Hey, oh, hey, Spooge hey. one. Board, so it's like, yeah, Chris shouldn't have him on the left hand side. Has a lot of boost, can make something happen. Nearly gets the shot off. JK gets a save, does get pushed aside, but thankfully the rebound was controlled immediately. Uh -oh. No, nobody uh -oh. in net. They could just walk this all the way. That, that 2 0 for GMU would have felt like an 8 nothing putting it in your own net. They would have yeah, been definitely been hurting that one. They would have been kicking themselves something fierce. JK, great little pass over the middle. Can they find that second touch? It's going to be Quint or Spoos to dig that one out. Christian taking this one out, trying to make something happen on the offensive end. He's going to dodge Titanium. Oh, Christian going to lie. So GMU, nice and safe here. Four to five seconds to go. Titanium trying to get something going in this offensive end. So to that right side, trying to maybe find a pass. Not going to be a good reset there. He's going to send that over right to one of the Saints. And JK cheating up on that midline. Not yeah. going to be back there. And Christian's going to find them. It's to the corner here of the Saints zone. Quinn trying to pick it up. He's past Titanium. Looking for some additional assistance here. Spoods is there for it. Round into the crease. JK going to...